I have a personal announcement. While today is not my final show, this is going to be my final summer here at Meet the Press. It's been an amazing, nearly decade-long run. I'm pretty, really proud of what this team and I have built over the last decade, and frankly, the last 15-plus years that I've been here at NBC, which also includes my time as political director. I've lo loved so much of this job, helping to explain America to Washington and explain Washington to America. When I took over Meet the Press, it was a Sunday show that had a lot of people questioning whether it could still have a place in the modern media space. Well, I think we've answered that question and then some. We've taken Meet the Press from a single Sunday show to a distinct and important political franchise. From our daily show, Meet the Press Now, our magazine show, Meet the Press Reports, to our newsletters and podcasts, we've successfully expanded what makes Meet the Press special on Sundays to make it special no matter the topic or where it airs or when it airs. That includes our annual Meet the Press Film Festival as well, which has somehow become one of the most important festivals for Oscar buzz and nominations for news-driven documentaries. But the key to survival of any of these incredible media entities, including here at Meet the Press, is for leaders not to overstay their welcome. I'd rather leave a little bit too soon than stay a tad bit too long. I've had two amazing professional chapters, and I already have plans for my next chapter, including some projects right here at NBC News that I've been uh, very focused on, among them docu-series and some docudramas focused on trying to educate the public better, bridge our divides, and pierce our political bubbles. So while I may be leaving this chair, I'm still going to help NBC navigate and coach colleagues in this 2024 campaign season and beyond. But this is also an important time for me personally. I've let work consume me for nearly 30 years. I can't remember the last time I didn't wake up before 5 or 6 a.m. And as I've watched too many friends and family let work consume them before it was too late. I promised my family I wouldn't do that. And just as important, and this is what really makes me happy, I'm also ready to take a step back because I have so much confidence in the person whom I'm going to pass the baton to. She's somebody who's been ready for this for a long time, Kristen Walker. I've had the privilege of working with her from essentially her first day here in Washington. And let me just say, she's the right person in the right moment. And for what it's worth, this is always how I hoped this would end for me, that I'd be passing the baton to her. And I'll officially do that in September. I'll be honest, though, I leave feeling concerned about this moment in history, but reassured by the standards we've set here. We didn't tolerate propagandists, and this network and program never will. But it doesn't mean sticking your head in the sand, either. If you ignore reality, you'll miss the biggest story. Being a real political journalist isn't about building a brand. It's about reporting what's happening and explaining why it's happening and letting the public absorb the facts. If you do this job seeking popularity, you are doing this job incorrectly. I take the attacks from partisans as compliments, and I take the compliments from partisans with a grain of salt. The goal of this and every Meet the Press episode is to do all of the following in one informative hour. Make you mad, make you think, shake your head in disapproval, and, so, and nod your head in approval. If you do all of that in one hour of this show, we've done our job. So again, this isn't goodbye, but know this, no matter who sits in this chair, if it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press.